Hello and welcome. Today we are talking 2009 Subaru Forester with 169,000 miles. By now, I have owned this car for about 3 months and roughly under 1,000 miles. This Forester is equipped with a 2.5 liter displacement flat boxer engine and it's mounted to the 5 speed manual transmission, which is the only pair option you should get. I usually try to stay away from the Subarus for quite a few reasons that we will talk about later in the video, but this was an exception, this particular car. Uh, it was well maintained and it was absolutely spotless under the hood. Now let me share with you what I know and learned about this car so you can make your decision to own one or not. Pros of owning this Subaru. Number one is the fun factor. Every single time you get behind the steering wheel and start shifting that manual transmission paired with the aftermarket exhaust, which is just the muffler deletes, makes you feel good. Not fast, but good. Putting smile every single time on your face. Now, this exhaust setup is a bit too loud for my taste at about steady 3000 RPMs, but that could be just me. Number two is the durability. It seems like everything, including the interior fabric, exterior and interior plastics, even the headliner are made to last and very easy to keep clean. I like the design and the quality of the fabric. Number three is practicality. This Forester can tow light trailers. It is equipped with a solid symmetrical all-wheel drive system. You can drive this Forester on anything that might be considered as a road. And all of this you can do with high level of confidence in any sort of weather conditions. Inside, room for five, with a generous space in your luggage compartment for travel, work, or your pets. I got about four to five inches here. Looking from the outside of the size, the way this car looks, you would never expect that there is just so much space in here. Very well done, Subaru. Just pull this little guy and well done. It goes down. And you got a good size loading capacity here. The cons of owning one of these Foresters, and particularly keeping it in such mechanical condition, are all related to the cost of repairs and maintenance. Now, remember I told you at the beginning of the video that I've never seen a Subaru this clean under the hood. No oil leaks zero. I mean, I've never seen this in the Subaru before. It's so clean in here that you can have a picnic, as most of the problems are related to this 2.5 liter flat boxer engine. They are just not that reliable. Both transmissions, the 4-speed automatic and 5-speed manual, are good, solid, and will serve you well and long. Although the 4-speed automatic transmission is so slow that I would not even recommend getting it, considering that engine is problematic. 
yet it was the last reliable automatic transmission before the CVT switched to CVT for the Forester. Issue number one is the valve cover gasket, which will give up at about 100,000 miles and will cost you between $250 to $300 to replace. Not that expensive. Now, issue number two is not necessarily an issue, it's just the way the engine is built. It is still timing belt driven, so your timing belt will have to be replaced at about 7 years of your car age or at 105,000 miles. It will set you back between $700 to $1,000. Number three is the AC compressor. When brakes spreads the broken particles throughout the entire system and it has to be rebuilt at about $1,200. My recommendation to you, if you own one of these and it is aged without a history of the AC compressor being replaced, replace it as a preventative maintenance. It will save you quite a few dollars. Now the big ones. Number four is the oil consumption. For this flat boxer engine, it is vital to have a proper and adequate oil level at all times. So make a habit to check it at least once a week. And then depending on how gently this engine was used, also with high quality gas and proper and timely oil changes, will determine on how much your engine is burning oil. As first of all, if it burns a lot, it will create deficit, so you will have to be adding a lot more oil. But that's not the biggest problem. When it burns, it clogs your catalytic converter because it has to go through the pipe, right? Exhaust pipe. And when that happens, now you have to replace the catalytic converter. And for the states where it's needed, where you have to have it, such as California, with the parts roughly just at $350, but with complicated labor, will set you back about $1,400 out the door. Number five is the biggest issue that you might have. It's the replacement of your head gasket when it fails, which happens again when the engine is not loved and properly maintained. Happens a lot nowadays. That will cost you about $3,000, or to replace the entire engine, which will run about $4,500. Very expensive. Let's talk about what I had to address with my Forester. Number one was the poor condition of the interior. The seats had stains. The rear seat had a chewing gum slashed all over it. Everything, the carpets, the floor mats, the door panels, even the headliner had to be deep cleaned and reconditioned. Number two was the exterior in the desperate need of cleaning, paint correction like every body element, paintless dent removal, polish and wax. So this one is definitely a 10 out of 10 in terms of the mileage versus condition of the powertrain. The exterior, that's where the work is going to be done at. Uh, there's probably not even a single panel that does not need attention. Bumper has scrapes. Uh, there is a scrape here, uh, dent. Uh, some sort of residue on the body and this is not just coming off so it will have to be taken care of with some chemical not a big deal scuffs all over the place uh, dance I love the rims so these are Subaru rims but I'm not sure which Subaru they are from but I think the Subaru this Forester looks much better you also can tell that there is a set of Yakima uh, roof rack supports, so all that's missing is just crossbars, not a big deal. Now the interior is also where the work will have to be done. Uh, it's ran down, and again, I don't think it's the guy who owned it for a long time, it's the person who I bought it from. Uh, there is just, again, not even a single element that will not need the attention. Uh, the headliner is also all beat up and scuffed, but I don't see any major issues. I think most of it will come out. Just, you know, it was used, <laughs> not with love, by the last owner.
Anyway, you know it's a Subaru. Uh, some sort of animal was scuffing the car here. Even has a little tow package. Uh, here is the exhaust system if you're curious. As I told you earlier, it's just the muffler delete in the back. Very good example of a Forester. Issue number three took place at the end of the first day of filming, when I got a Christmas light exhibition in the way of my dash lights, including the check engine, no traction control, and flashing cruise control that I could not stop for some reason. Well, I'm glad it happened to me, not to a person who would be driving this car away. Imagine the shock. I personally did not freak out as much. As all of these three lights came on at the same time and while I was driving on the rougher gravel road. But the car was still running well. So I came home, scanned the Forester and found that there is one insignificant pending code that just could not bring the Christmas early. I decided to simply disconnect the battery. And while doing this, I noticed that the battery is not tightened or bolted in its place as tight as it should and both connectors are oxidized. So I remember I had the same situation with my Mazda MX-5 in the past. I cleaned the connectors, tightened the battery, and started the car to find out that it was not idling properly. And I had the same situation with my 2010 Camry in the past, where the car has to go through adaptation and relearn how to idle again. What do you know? After about 30 minute period, the Subaru was back on the road at 100% functional, for which I was very thankful for. In conclusion, I hope you can still see me, it's getting dark, but most importantly, I hope you can hear me. The above list of cons are the reasons why I try to avoid the Subarus and would not recommend them to be owned by my friends or clients. But if you are a fan of Subaru brand or you are in a need of what this vehicle can do, then find one. Search for one with good maintenance history, with the mechanical condition that I described above that is very important what's happening under the hood, that it's clean, well-maintained and loved. Don't worry about the cosmetics. Cosmetics are very easy and fun to take care of. Worry and care about the mechanical condition. I really hope you can find one of these and enjoy it. Thank you for watching this video. Like it, share it, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you again. Bye-bye.